the morning after. That's all I wanted to know. Don't go, don't go, don't go crazy in the comments. I am leaning towards boots. I'm just saying this is a firefight, but I've seen guys like Via before. Let's see what happens tonight. I'm out. Shh. Boots in us. This fight with Via was going to answer some questions and we got our answers. See, we know now that Boots Ennis isn't just a fast fighter, a slick fighter, a fighter who throw great combinations with high IQ. He's a fighter who knows how and when to fight. I knew when fighting Via, Via was going to make him make that decision. He was gonna force some answers. Via, great chin, like I said, great power, great size. Walking down Boots Ennis and doing it responsibly. Good defense, good guard, all right? Good punch selection with the uppercuts and the jab. All those things. Boots Ennis had to fight him. And what did he do? He fought him. And what did he do after, while fighting him? He beat him up. You're talking about a guy in Via who forget never been knocked out. Forget never being knocked down. This guy never really been hurt. Boots did all of those things last night. He's a violent fighter. All I got to say about that is the 90s are back. Falling ever further behind him. Oh, no! The 90s are back, baby. From Tony. Oh! I'm telling you, if Boots is Roy Jones Jr., he'll be the Roy Jones Jr. If Boots is Roy, then Terrence Crawford is James Tony. Um... Errol Spence is Gerald McClellan. You get what I'm saying? If not Terry Norris, I'm talking about the middleweight division. Um, Keith one time, Thoyman would be Michael second to none. Um, your Dennis Ugas would be coming up weight classes. Donald Curry or some, you know, Donald Curry, he fought Terry Norris. Donald Curry, he moved up. He fought Michael Nunn too, right? Look at that shot. Good right by Donald Curry. That's Ugas. And you have Boots Ennis. Calling them all out. We get these these top guys, you know, Bud, Spence, Ugas, Keith Thurman, Stan Jonas. Hopefully it's a one-sided fight and nobody get a rematch and then I'll I, I be, I be, I be next, you know. And the thing is, another thing about Boots that reminds me of Roy, during those times, Roy Jones' father was protecting Roy a bit. And he was moving him along slowly in his career. And people start seeing, looking at Roy Jones, great wins, right? He had like, I mean, if you look at that fight before uh, Percy Harris, I think he was like 19 and 0. The problem was, who did he beat? Um, regarded by many in the sport as having been overprotected. So he hasn't had a chance to prove much in winning 19 bouts, 18 by KO. Boots Ennis answered all those questions last night the way Roy Jones did against Percy Harris when he knocked out Via. And that's the black two sugars. Don't forget, Roy Jones versus Percy Harris was on the undercard of James Tony. Tonight is my first step for the middleweight championship. I want it so bad, I can taste it. James Tony, those questions were already answered, like Terrence Bud Crawford, and that's the black two sugars. Mm. Ah. Much love to Via and what he did, but I'm saying the 90s are back. You know, we just got to get on this for a while because I'm so excited about this because this is how I came up. This is what I was seeing every day, the 90s middleweights and the welterweights and stuff like that. When you look at Derek James stable, when you look at Jamel Charlo and how he fights. Errol Spence almost fights exactly how Derrick James fought in the 90s. Now there's the right hand again, staggers Joe Lipsick. Some drama from your Denny Zugas and really the first time. Against the southpaw and dropped his right and Joe Lipsick came over the top of the left hook oh, and just hit him with another left he... hook. Of each other. That right hand hurt Spence. Oh. Spence just a better fighter. Derrick James is bringing that 90s type of approach to fighting. And let me let me describe it a little bit. They were on their toes in boxing because people were still influenced by Muhammad Ali. Carlos Sugar De Leon to unify and become the undisputed cruiserweight champion of the world. Now tonight, Holyfield comes in. But they were sitting down on their punches more and going to war and trying to brutalize each other and knock each other's each other out. Put those combinations together. Oh, oh short left hand on the inside. Big, big shot. Richard 
It was like the perfect blend of boxing and slugging. Get your legs out from under you. Oh, nice shot by Julian. As he goes upstairs, no chance of South oh. of there. Julian going to win it right here. Down goes Jack. It was like, you know the Mexican style, they call it the Mex Mexican style fighting, which I call it the Japanese style because those guys be going to war. It was like a black version of it. It was like a black Mexican style. His corner told Tony Rowe to go on the leap. He keeps me just jab right in. And he's an awfully experienced young fighter, George. <laughs> it was like a black version of it where you had the boxing and you had the mobility, but going to war. Terry Norris was good for that. He was a great, perfect blend of all that. If you look at Errol Spence, if you look at Jamel, if you look at who Derek James pick up in the stable, AJ, he has the ability to do that because he has good, good hands, good height, you know, good speed, but he has power to boot. Ryan Garcia. So you can tell the type of fighters he likes and the type of fights that he wants. He wants you to beat up the opponent. Forget about the scorecard. When you look at Boots Ennis last night, he has that. He has that willingness and want and know when to fight. Oh, the left, the right, and Bia goes down! It's something to be excited about. I'm not saying Boots Ennis is the perfect fighter, but he's the perfect fighter. You know, his last fight with Karen, this should shut that all up. I told you guys, a lot of fighters, most fighters who are counter punchers, just don't look good against fighters who are trying to get the hell out of there fighting off their back foot and moving. But the good thing about Boots' fight, fight against Karen when everybody was down on him, he dominated the fight and he won every round. But people wanted, hey, look, he wanted him to just brutalize him. But styles make fights. And when you're a counter puncher, that makes it ugly. I told you guys about Teofimo Lopez or Tis Martin, Regis Progray, his last fight. When you're a counter puncher and you're going up against somebody who's on their back foot, doesn't look so good. But when you're going against somebody who's willing to fight, that's when you really shine. Boots Ennis, I'm not going to say he's the perfect fighter, but he's the perfect fighter. He's just like Javante Tank Davis. I compared him to Tank Davis last night. A guy who's able to box, but a guy who's able to fight and, how, and has the power to demonstrate that. Let me know how you all feel in the comments below. Show biz or don't. I'm extremely excited about this era. I'm extremely excited to know what's going to happen in a few weeks. Um, Errol Spence versus Terrence Crawford. I'm not sure if I'm going to do who won the All Access. <laughs> Because people are getting noise, noise, noise. I'm out. <laughs>